Welcome to CT Small Business Toolkit, where small business innovators and influencers share the advice that will help you turn your idea into a business and your business into a success. Let's get started. Our guest this week on CT Small Business Toolkit is Melinda Emerson. She is known as the Small Biz Lady. You can find her at smallbizlady.com or succeedasyourownboss.com. She's the author of Become Your Own Boss in 12 Months. She joins us now at the dawn of 2016 to discuss some very important tips for anyone hoping to launch their own business this year, as well as some New Year's resolutions for existing small business owners, some trends and ideas that she's noticed among business owners that could use a little fine-tuning in the coming weeks and months uh, in general. And Melinda, Happy New Year to you. Thanks for being with us. Thank you so much for having me, Greg. You know, I always love to hang out with you and talk about how to help small business owners. Yes, yes. Your passion for that is uh, unrivaled as far as I'm concerned. So let's talk about those folks who have decided that even if they might be content in their existing job or they just want to do something new or they've just had this burning passion uh, to launch a business in a specific area. As your book suggests, it's not something you should jump into uh, as, as a lark without going through the right processes and thinking through the most important things before getting that business up and running. So if they're interested in getting that done next year, what are the most important things for them to remember as they start? Well, you know, I, I laid out the Emerson planning system, my six-step system to transition from employee to entrepreneur, exactly for these kinds of folks. If you're burning to start a new business in 2016, here's what I want you to do first. I want you to figure out your life plan. You need to figure out what you want and why you want it so that you build a business that's going to help you live your dream lifestyle. Don't start a business that might be a good business, but it's not a good business for you and your family. So, for example, if you're going to become a caterer, let's say your niche is going to be weddings. Well, if you're going to be a wedding caterer, you're basically tying up most of your weekends from April to about November. And you've got to think about, do you have small children that have a lot of weekend activities? That's going to be a clash with your lifestyle. So you've got to make sure that the business is the right business for you. The next thing you've got to do is figure out how you're going to pay for it because the money to start your business is going to come from your right or your left pocket. Banks do not loan money to start a businesses. So the first year of working capital is going to come from you, yet you still have to have an emergency savings account for your household and depending on what kind of business you're going to start, you got to be prepared financially to go without a paycheck for a year or two because it takes 12 to 18 months for a small business to break even, let alone replace your corporate salary. So there's a lot of upfront sacrifice financially, and you've got to be prepared to do that. The third thing you've got to examine is your business concept. But you have to examine it from what skills you have versus what skills you need to run your particular kind of business. I don't want you to start a restaurant because you like to eat. I want you to start a restaurant because <laughs> you know something about running a restaurant. So that may require you to work part-time in a business like the one you want to start so that you can get a full understanding of what it really takes. Then the fourth thing I want you to do is figure out who your paying customer is. Don't be one of these entrepreneurs that chases anybody that you think has money. You want to specialize in solving somebody's problem every day. And that is how you're going to build a profitable and sustainable small business. Don't be one of these people that get so excited about your logo or your location or your brand new website. Make sure you know day one who your customer is. And the more specific, the better. The fifth thing you got to do is you really do need a business plan. You have to plan for success. It's not going to just happen to you. Go to beatplans.com and look at some sample business plans, and then use some free business plan software to build your plan. Do you need a 40-page manifesto? No, but do you need 10 good pages that are going to teach you what you got to do to get the phone to ring? As a matter of fact, what are you going to do when the phone does ring? Yes. So you want to walk through all of that so that you have a clear understanding of what business you're in, how you're going to be different in the marketplace, and how you're going to close business and fulfill business for your customers because you never want to let a customer down. And step five in the Emerson planning system is – uh, you know, once you do your business plan, step six is I want you to launch your business while you're still working. 
I really want you to become a moonlighter or what I like to call a side hustler. I do not believe that you're starting a business that you need to quit your full-time job. Unless, of course, you're starting a business that directly competes with your full-time job, you always want to keep your integrity. But if you're starting a business that has nothing to do with your job, do that business on your evenings and weekends and build up a customer base. Make sure you know who your customer is and start making some money. And then once you're making enough money to replace your salary, that's when it's time to leave your job and not before. Melinda, folks, first of all, fantastic advice. Secondly, uh, folks might be listening to that and saying, okay, I think I've got maybe three, four, maybe even five of those in place, but there's one in there that I'm just not sure that uh, that, that I'm all excited about that or I think I'm a good fit for that, whether it's I can uh, do all sorts of aspects of the business, but I'm not a good money guy or I am a good money guy, but I'm not so good at some other uh, things that Melinda just talked about. How do you determine whether that's something you can grow into or, or, or get help to to cover if you're not good at that? or whether that's really a red flag for you. Well, it really starts with your life plan first and really getting clear about what your real good skills are. And then it goes back to the business concept. Depending on what kind of business you want to start, maybe you need to get a partner or maybe you need to go get some training before you launch your business. The worst thing you can do is start a business that you don't have any industry experience in. That's a great way to lose, to lose a bunch of money and learn some expensive lessons. So you want to make sure that you take the time to build your skills up or look for a really good partner that has the skills you don't. Maybe you're somebody that hates people, you don't want to sell, then you better get you a business partner that loves to sell so you can get someone to help you. Otherwise, you've got to just force yourself to get these skills so that you can launch your business and be successful. We're talking with Melinda Emerson. You can find her at succeedasyourownboss.com. Her book is Become Your Own Boss in 12 Months. And Melinda, let's shift now to existing small business owners. And uh, even if things are going well, there's always ways to refine and improve. And if things aren't going well, there's obviously, uh, hopefully, an appetite for welcome advice. Uh, As you consult with and advise and run your own small business and just observe small business in general, what do you see as some of the areas that most small business owners could probably do a little better, whether it's marketing, uh, social media, uh, product development, uh, customer service. What seems to be jumping out at you right now? I think people are really struggling with managing their brands online, whether it's their website, making sure their website is up-to-date, mobile-ready, making sure that they've got great offers on their website, and that people know why they're there within three seconds of landing on their page. That's really important. The second thing is I see a lot of people killing themselves with social media. They're out here doing Facebook, Pinterest, Google+, LinkedIn, Snapchat, Periscope. Listen, stop the insanity. Pick one or two platforms where you're going to focus, and they should be platforms where your niche target customer spends the majority of their time online. Stop trying to do everything because you're not moving the needle in your business, and you're potentially wasting a lot of time. The third thing I would say is you've got to look at what you should be measuring. You've got to be looking at your Google Analytics or any of your other measures to find out what are your best referral sources. If you know your best referral source is organic search, well, then that means you've got to keep blogging and keep giving people what they want so they'll come to your website. But it might be your best referral source is Facebook or Twitter or whatever, but you won't know if you're not measuring, if you're not looking. And the other thing you've got to do is make sure you're nurturing relationships with email. 87% of marketers are still using email. And if you create content that is relevant and valuable to your target customer, they will open your email emails, and they will keep you top of mind. So you've got to make sure that you have a really good content strategy and a good email marketing program to follow up on the content once you engage someone who comes to your website. Melinda, just about a minute left in our conversation. Uh, Tell our listeners a little bit more about the work that you do on a day-to-day basis and what type of help and resources you provide. Well, I am the small biz lady, and I help people get free from a job. If you are interested in starting a business in 2016, please come and check out what I have to offer. My book, Become Your Own Boss in 12 Months, my workbook, Are You Ready to Become Your Own Boss? But I also have a six-week mastermind course that you can join, and I'm going to be doing live office hours starting in January, January 21st. So if you want to sign up for my mastermind course and get personal one-on-one coaching from me on how to launch your business, I invite you to go to succeedasyourownboss.com and check it out. And I also have a 30-day fast start program coming, so stay tuned for that. 
Anytime you want to find me, just Google Small Biz Lady. If you can't remember Melinda Emerson, remember that, and you'll always find everything you need to know about what I'm doing for small businesses. She not only gives great advice, the success of her own small business is testament to her knowledge and her expertise. Melinda, again, always fabulous to have you with us. Thank you for your time, and Happy New Year to you. Thank you so much, Greg. Happy New Year to you, and happy holidays. Thank you. Melinda Emerson is the Small Biz Lady, SucceedAsYourOwnBoss.com, author of Become Your Own Boss in 12 Months. I'm Greg Columbus, reporting for CT Small Business Toolkit. Thanks for joining us on CT Small Business Toolkit. Be sure to visit our website, ct.walterskluwer.com, and follow at CT Corporation on Twitter. We'll see you next time on CT Small Business Toolkit.